doing it. You got you supposed to be happy you sitting there with Kid L. Why you mad? The Kid L podcast. <laughs> uh, you're uh, dropping a lot on social media and people are in love with you. Like I noticed that the content's always flying. People are going nuts when you post. Um, you just dropped a music video recently, not more than like five days ago or whatever. Yeah. And uh, people are really getting magnetized towards you. Um, how long have you really been involved in music behind the scenes and the forefront of it? So I really only been like professionally recording for about like two years now. Okay. So, but I've been singing like my whole life, like went to performing arts school and all of that. So like, I really been singing my whole life, but in the scene, I really like just got outside. Damn. Yeah. What made you get um, on social media more after going through uh, theater and everything like that? Um, really, it was just like I wasn't really taking it serious. It was just like, okay, I'm about to post a video of me singing until people started liking it. So I'm like, at first it was just like a little hobby. Like I was, <laughs> I was working on a boat, and it was just like a little hobby. Like, okay, I'm just gonna sing and look cute. And it was just when people start liking it, I'm like, damn. I could probably like really like be somebody for real. Were you like uh what do you mean on a boat? Like I used to work on a yacht. Oh. Yeah. That people used to rent for like weddings and all of that. So I was just like making bank on there. I was cool where I was at. Damn, that like rich people a yacht life. Yes, it was such a fun job because basically you just getting drunk with people because they did say like <laughs> we couldn't like you couldn't like get drunk, but it was just like you getting great tips. We on water and like it's just around a whole bunch of drunk people. Yeah. So it was lit. The tips have to be crazy. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Especially when you like cute. Because, <laughs> you know, when people get drunk, you just want to spare money. Yeah. So it was just like, it was just like, fuck it, here. Yeah. So you're, that's how you're kind of making money in order to fund yourself to be able to work on music and be a part of it and everything? Well, now it's just like music is my only thing. Cool. So now it's just like music, that's just it. That's all I do. Yeah. And mom, of course. Oh, your mom, too? Yeah. Oh, cool. How, how old's your uh, son or daughter? He's son. He's three. He's three years old? Yep. Damn. So you got to... That's the hardest part for me is always figuring out how entertainers manage their balance between family and their music. It's hard. But me, I'm a type like, okay, like my son, he's with me in the studio. He's kind of like learning how to be in the studio to where he'll sit there on his phone or he'll be actually like interested in what I'm doing. Oh, cool. Like a couple tracks, we have him on there. Really? <laughs> yeah, you could barely notice, but he's like, he's crying in the background or some shit like oh, that. Oh, cool. Yeah. It keeps it organic, right? Yeah. So it's just like, hey, he go be in the studio. You dropped uh, visuals for For Real, right? Yep, For Real. And uh, the visuals were just stunning. Like, Thank you. Who's doing your work for you? Diego. Oh, Diego. Diego. Of course yes. it's Diego. Of course yep. Diego's doing it. That was actually the first video that we shot together, but I've been knowing Diego, but that was the first video we shot. Mm. And it was it was like a fun process, too. Yeah. Walk and everybody it was, through the process. So, basically, I came, me and my team came up with the ideas of, like, how I wanted to look. Because this video, I was planning it to be, like, this is, like, a real reputation of, like, who I am. Mm. So, I wanted to come, like, soft girl, but, like, with a little edge. And it's just, like, the song, me and my, me and my best friend, like, it's just, like, the song is so real to where it's just, like, I thought it was, like, a good reputation to where, like, we go show, like, who I really am yeah. and not, like, do too much to actors. I wanted to just, like, be just me. Yeah. And when you dial it in with Diego, it's very easy, right? Because he's so understanding. And he yeah, knows how to like, get what you're thinking. I gave him, I gave him my thoughts and, like, he had it all planned out for real. It yeah. was, like, we were on the same page. That's cool. How have you been feeling about the engagement you've been receiving on social media, on Instagram especially? Everything's been going crazy as far as comments and everything. Is it yeah. making you feel like, damn, I know I have it? Or are you feeling like some other type of way right now? Yeah, it made me really feel like, damn, you a stupid bitch. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> because why haven't you like been consistent? And like, yeah. It's just like, damn, what you been doing? So it just really made me feel like, okay, like, now it's time to work. Like, I've been playing. Like, now it's time to work. Yeah, nothing's worse than lost time, right? Yeah, I just look back like, I could have, like, what you been doing? I just been being lazy. Every time people take breaks, they're always like, God damn it, man. If I just had not taken that yeah. break, everything would have been chilling right now. But I'm kind of happy, though. I'm like, it's better, it's better, like, better now than, like, never. So it's just like. I'm just trying to, like, work, and I'm just, like, trying to really work the record, like, you feel me? Yeah. So that people, like, can, like, really connect to it, but it's just, like, you got to put it out there first. For sure. You also did the the penthouse videos, which I think that was, like, a limited series. I don't know if oh, they're still yeah. doing it, but that was cool as hell, too. 
Um, walk us through, I mean, you've done the field, you've done the mics and mm-hmm. everything like that. Walk us through kind of your preparation for it because it is, you know, when you come from somewhere where it's oh, from like a theater background or anything like that, it, it, everything's more so a production and it's right. set up and it's like you get to rehearse and really figure it out. When you're going to all these uh, mics and everything like that, is it the same situation for you as preparation's concerned? Um, yeah, for certain situations, but me as a person, I'm very last minute. So, like, with the penthouse, we plan to, like, you know, do my song. But with the new idea, that was his first time doing it. And so it was really, like, on the spot, like, okay, we'll be we going to sing. So it was just, like, his first time doing it. And I was just telling him, like, that idea is going to be, like, amazing. Because, like, that's amazing. So I was so happy, like, to do the first one. But usually, like, my preparations for stuff, like, I do, like, rehearse. Like, lately, like... Being a performer has been, like, my key focus ah, for this summer. Very, very smart. So that's why I want to work this record. I want to get out here. I want to perform. Like, I don't just want to just, oh, this is my record on Instagram. Like, I actually want to, like, get out and work and, like, perform for, yeah. like, festivals and all of that. For sure. Everything cool? Uh, I'd like to adjust your microphone. Oh, cool. You're going <laughs> to mess with your mic real quick. You're swinging it's your actually mic. a really good mindset. I think when artists do do that, and when they dial in, like, okay, what's my mindset going to be mm-hmm. as far as presenting myself as an artist? It's important to know, like, which angle you're going to take with it, right? right? And so for you, you figured out that performance. Like, okay, I'm going to give my best performance every time I go out and do something. Yeah. And it's just like, I really have been, like, working, like, what type of artist do I want to be? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm trying to figure that stuff out before I even get to, like, you know, like, the bigger opportunities. So it's just, I'm really just trying to, like... You know, as artists, you still have to figure out, like, who you are and what type, what makes you stand out. Yeah. So it's just that that's my goal this summer. For sure. That's very smart. Um, You're from Detroit? Yes. Did you grow up, you grew up on, like, on a farm? Yeah. I actually, like, people don't know that. I'm really from the east side, though. Okay. Like, because I've been in the east side since I was, like, maybe since third grade. So it's just, like, I adapt to that. But, like, I really grew up on a farm. And, like, my grandmother, she still lives on a farm. Like a real farm? Like real farm. Like chicken coops, Coop. cows, everything. What's that like? I hated it. <laughs> I always wanted to be in the city. Like, I would literally cry at my grand- my grandparents' house, like, Mom, like, come get me. So I'd never been, like, the country type at all. Like, my brothers, they grew up down there. But me, I wasn't having it. Did you have to do the chores and shit? Yeah. Was One you- year, I actually, I had got a cow. Uh. And I had to take care of, like, the whole summer. But you get money from it, though, at the end of the summer. It's like maybe a couple How'd you thousand. take care of the cow? Like, just milk it and stuff? No. I didn't have a dairy cow. See, it's a difference. Like, oh. so I had a beef cow. So we're like, you know, ground beef. We take it to the fair, and they buy them, and they kill them, and get the meat. So I had to, like, comb their hair every day, wash them, blow dry their hair. Like, it's crazy. Like, <laughs> I really had to do that twice a day. You know, in, like, India, the cows are, like, considered pets. And it's like they can go get. I really, would say that. Yeah, they can get really close because they're yeah. very emotionally like uh uh vigilant, vigilant. Yeah, like usually, like you have to. When I first had a cow, she did not like me. Mm-hmm. She was aggressive, but towards the end of the summer, it was just like I was the only person that could come around her. Yeah. So it's like it really is like having a pet. Yeah, that's crazy as hell. But so, I wouldn't do it again though. So once you um, when did you feel like you left the farm <laughs> off the farm? Like, did you ever get off the farm? Yeah, I only did it for that one year, and oh, I'm okay. like, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to go back to the city. Like, I always love being here. Like, I never liked being in the country. I've always been, like, a city person. What was it like uh, when you, so coming back to the city, though, like, how did you uh, readapt? Well, I, re- I adapt good, but it was just like, you know, I had to learn how to fight and stuff like that. Why? <laughs> They're like, you know, in Detroit, like, that's just how it is, especially, like, middle school. I always, like, I had to, like, learn how to fight in junk. Yeah. Because, you know, they are just be, like, the, you know, Detroit is tough, so you had to be tough. But it will be, like, friends, though. It was just, like, we about to go 30 seconds, girl. We're gonna but go. we're still friends. Oh, my God. <laughs> just fighting for no real cause. Yes, literally. But, uh- like, adapting, it was good, though. Like, But, like, still, even high school, I went to, like, kind of, like, a... Oh, like whiter school. I didn't go to like a Detroit school, so it was really I wasn't really like. Was your father white? Yep. Was so you're are you mixed half black half yep. white? Yep. My mom's black and my dad's white. Your dad. I seen photos of your dad. Um, uh, talk about your dad a little bit. So my dad, he was like my best friend, and like 2020, he ended up committing suicide. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, thank you, thank you. So that's when like maybe 
a couple months after that, that's when I started taking music seriously. What was uh, your life like with him? Um, my dad was literally like my best friend. I wouldn't even say like he wasn't really like he, we didn't have like parent rules. He was like the fun parent. So it was just like my dad would go out. We would go to parties together. So it was just like he was my best friend. And music, yeah. music. I had American Idol audition here when they came to Detroit. For some odd reason, I don't know how he got back there, but I made it through. Security came to me and was like, can you please talk to your dad? I don't know how he ended up getting back here. <laughs> he was just so excited that I made it that he couldn't help himself. So he ended up sneaking to backstage. I was just like, oh, my God. Yeah. And he was the one that took me to, like, the second round of American Idol. So he was, like, a big, like, my career. That's all he wanted me to do. Wow. Like, that's all he wanted me to do. What was, um? So what was the American Idol experience like? Did you Did you get far? Uh, I got to like the third round. Cool. But it was it was good. It was fun. But it's just like the waiting, it was just draining. Like I was waiting probably like I got there at like 7, 6 a.m. I didn't go till probably about 6 p.m. Were you shocked when they gave you the no for the last round? Yeah. I cried. Damn. I cried. Did they film that shit or did it was, no? Uh, <laughs> they didn't film it. No, because it's the preliminaries before yeah. you actually get to like. But the But it was show. still, it was still like, it was like the producers, mm. like the people that ran the whole show. Yeah. But it was really like you had to have a story. It's crazy that your dad was that involved with you to the point where you guys were like brother and sister type friends. Yeah, we were. That's crazy. Like literally, like we were. How would he handle the like, guys hitting on you? Was he like, did he just back away? Um. Yeah, kind of. Like, my dad wasn't really, like, unless it was, like, his friends or something. He'd be like, hey, bro, that's my daughter. But, like, if it, no. And, like, some of my friends, like, would like my dad. Like, Instagram, like, when my dad first came home, they loved my dad. All the bitches on Instagram was like, I'm about to be your stepmama. What? Yeah, it was crazy. When you got back home, he went away? He, He was in jail for, like, most of my life. Oh, wow. But we were still, like, really close. Like, my grandma would take me to, like, go see him. So, like, we were still really close. We probably talked every day on the phone. It wasn't White Boy Rick, was he? No. <laughs> like, no. What, like, what happened for him to get a sentence? We, oh, just, shit that's legal now. Yeah. But, like, he would, like, run away from the cops and shit like that. Yeah. My dad was, like, a little bad. Was he, like, street type person? Yeah, my dad had tattoos on his face. Oh, my God. All over his body. He was a tattoo artist. He did most of my tattoos. Oh, damn. Yeah. How old were you when you went away? Um, so he went away when I was three and he got back out when I was nine and then went away when I was 12 and got back out when I was 18. Oh, damn. Yeah. And then he died when he, when I was 20. Damn. Damn. Yeah. So he really, so we really only had two years when he got out, (sighs) but still like I found out I was pregnant when he was still alive. He didn't die until I was eight months pregnant. So like every day of my pregnancy, we were together and like it was COVID. So like we were I basically would go over his house like every day. What? Oh, when he was away, would he call you a lot? Like, so were you guys able to maintain a relationship through phone calls? Yeah, it was like every day. Me and him would talk, or every week. What were you learning about him? Like, when you were talking to him over the phone? Um, like, I always knew my dad because, like, even with, like, memories when I was young, I knew him. And, like, my mom was never a, like, oh, you can't see your dad. Like, she would take us or my grandparents. So it's like, I always knew him. <laughs> But I would say once he got out when I was 18, when I was grown, it was kind of like I used to be mad that he was gone all the time. But then it was kind of like I didn't want to waste time. So when he got out, that's when, like, we really clicked and really had, like, deep conversations. And, like, I really, like, this is who I get it from. That's what I really learned. Because, like, I don't think I'm anything like my mom. Mm. I'm just like my dad. Damn. Even with, like situations how we react to stuff is like the same and my mom used to always tell me that like you just like your damn daddy yeah. so did i've you, always been like a when you had your um son were you were you in a relationship at the time um yeah but once i had him i really wasn't mm. i wasn't in relationship. He on you? like the guy dipped on no you? he didn't dip he's oh. he he's take he take care of his oh, kid good. like we co parent yeah. yeah like no he didn't dip co parent <laughs> Yeah, it's like we got we got a good co-parent. He come get his kid. That's it. Cool. So it's just like it's been like that since he was like born. So, um, with you facilitating yourself now and breaking out, you have like an R R and B style. Mm-hmm. Sounds pretty modern. Um, uh, I like 
I like a lot of the sounds that are coming from the producing ends too, whoever's doing your production for you. Mm-hmm. Um, what's kind of the inspiration behind your sounds? Um, inspiration, we like, it's like, I love more like a 90s, 2000s, but like I want to make it in this generation, but like I wanted to bring back the groove, the mm-hmm. live sounds. Like now it's more like, you know, kind of like the animated sound. So I kind of wanted to bring back like, the old school, like, R&B, like, I feel like now it's so much, it's either, like, hip-hop or it's, like, pop. It's, like, I wanted to bring back, like, the more R&B, like, hustling and all, because that's what, like, we known for. It's, like, hustling and all that. So I wanted to bring back, like, grooves because mm. I feel like we don't have that. Right now, it's, like, the rap scene in Detroit. That's it. Yeah, it's hard for the R&B scene to break out in Detroit right now. Yeah. You got the underground, uh, underground cats like Dre Sconey and stuff trying to bring it back, but it's just hard. It's because it's like what sells sells at the end of the day. That's, and we don't know. That's true. There are a lot of girls that are trying to push it too. There's a whole, there's a whole like uh, Lib- uh, Lib- uh, Libra. Damn, she's gonna kill me. Forget her name. But there's a lot of girls that are trying to push the R and B scene right now. Yeah. You got Tate Prince trying to push it. There's a few people. We had like Motown Ty, uh, Brian Hamilton. Mm-hmm. It's just very, very, very hard. Yeah, it's just like we just gotta keep grinding, grinding to find that song. And mm-hmm. I just feel like. It's not going to work unless we combine the two at first. Like, Mm -hmm. we have to combine the two. We have to make a bop to where it's R&B, but a rapper is on it, and it's, like, real groovy and vibey. Right. So I don't think, like, R&B is going to break for real unless we combine the two. You're absolutely right. Get them on the hooks. Yep. And just keep pushing that sound, you know? Or even if we get on the hooks, like... Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. The R&B singers get on the hooks, right? Yep. You got songs uh, and projects with like Skilla Baby and Baby Money, right? Mm-hmm. Um, talk about those projects and how those came together. Yep. So I'm trying to release that like soon, maybe this summer. I want to release like an EP with like Detroit rappers, just so like we can bring like the R&B back and mix the two. Like, so I've been trying to like really work and really like kind of get to know them to see like how can we combine the two because it's going to be a sound that like we don't know what it's going to sound like we just really got to get each other vibe and have like fun for the whole project so i really want to get with all of them to like do that yeah and i remember when like fat joe was doing that yeah fat joe would have like these fire ass rap verses and these crazy ass hooks yeah that's the thing that i'm so like cutthroat like i talk just like them but i just sing it yeah. So I'm like, it works like perfect. Like, cause I'm more like of, like my music is not really like R and B. Like I'm gonna say like fuck that nigga, but like I'm gonna sing it. Yeah, it's the R and B style, but yeah. it's kind of like the rap Detroit Detroit mm-hmm. rap format as far as lyricism is concerned, right? Yeah, like just like when people get to know me, they really find out like that's who I am. Yeah. Like I really like the homie for real. But you trapped in a girl body. Do you feel like you hang out with guys more or girls more? I'd rather hang out with guys. Real? Yeah. What's the difference for you? A lot of drama come with the girls. <laughs> a lot of drama come with the girls. I hear that. So that's why I like usually hang out with the same people or I hang out with my team, which is mostly men. So like it's just too much drama. And then what a lot of girls are after, like I'm not. Like what? Like, oh, like, they want to be, like, in men's faces and, um, no. Like, they want to go with the niggas with the money. I want to be the nigga with the money. Like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go sit in their face. Like, I'd rather have my own booth and do, I want to get around how I want to get around. I don't want to, like, depend on, like, niggas. So you can't chase a man, basically. I wouldn't say that. Oh, okay. (laughs) Because that's why I made for real, because I'm done chasing (laughs) But it's just certain people, like certain people, I chase. Certain particular type of person? Yeah. Or is there already somebody in your mind that you're already after? You're already after somebody? <laughs> Not for real. Not no more. Oh, damn. <laughs> What's the type of guy that you? it makes it where you're like, I'm going to actually chase you? It'd be so different for me because now I've been realizing, like, am I the problem? Mm. That's what I'll be realizing. Yeah, I'm on that same type of time. I wonder. I really try to figure out, is it me 
or is it you? Yeah, because think about that age, that very, very golden line. It's not me, it's you. Or no, it's not you, it's me. Yeah. It's not you, it's me, right? When people say it's not you, it's me, it's like, is that true though? Is it? That's what I'm saying. Or and me, just trying to be nice. I don't really like date people my age. I'm more like in the 30s and up. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, is it me? Because I'm only 24. Okay. So I'll be really thinking like, is it me or is it them? But I really, I'm a Virgo, so I really think it's them and not me. Because you know Virgos. I'm a Virgo. You a Virgo? Yeah, I was born on September 12th. Oh, 17. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm a Virgo. So you know how I feel. I don't think it's us. I think it, no, no, I do think it's me. In certain situations, it's certain people. You think it's you? I think it's me. Okay, maybe I'm in denial. I don't know. It may be. It's either you don't really like the person or you just can't find a way to simulate yourself inside of a relationship. Okay, that might be true. Because people just say I don't know how to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. To where I'm not a cheater. It's just certain things I feel. I just feel like, okay, maybe I do feel like I deserve the world, but I want to give it too. So I just feel like it, it should be on both sides. like, And I don't be feeling that from people. But I could just be a brat. So. Well, you never know. It's, it comes down to why the person's dating you in the first place. And if you pick the person that is literally invested in you because of you or if they just think you're hot right. or whatever the reason exactly. might be. I used to date women that just because they were hot, I didn't give a fuck about them. Like, <laughs> right. you're, I'm just dating you because you're hot. Like, damn, baby, fine as hell. <laughs> the girl would be falling in love. Meanwhile, I'm like, girl, yeah, I'm not thinking like about me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not thinking about no future with you <laughs> crazy ass person. Oh, my God. Yeah. See, I... I, I, okay, we might be the os- opposite. I never, like, met a male Virgo. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I love too hard. Mm. I feel like I'm the one, like, you just said, like, oh, my God, I love you so much. And they probably be like, bitch, you just <laughs> fine as hell. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But at the same time, that's where you wonder if it is you, though, because you wonder, they, they call it, like, avoidant types. Like, people have yeah. avoidant personalities where, like, the more somebody loves you, the more you resist their love. Exactly. So you do wonder how much truth is in that. I don't know. It, it, and it really be yourself. Because if you feel this way, why don't you just like get the fuck on? Exactly. That'd be my whole thing. But people make it hard too, though. It's not yeah. easy to just leave a relationship, right? Yeah, not at all. Especially guys. Guys are crazy as fuck. I know. Guys are like, you try to leave a relationship with a guy? <laughs> oh, yeah. You think you're going to leave with me? <laughs> like, right. Then they do. And then like once, you, once they feel like you get ready to leave them. They do stuff to make you love them again. Be like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna stay. Like, <laughs> oh my god, I was just about to leave you. Yeah. I'd be so done until they call. Do you ever? Did you ever know that it was over in a relationship? Like, do you ever remember a moment where you knew it's this precise moment that it was over? Absolutely. Well, you take us back to the time. <laughs> so it was. I was dating like this one dude, and he had he had found out that I cheated. But it was with a girl. Mm. So I just feel like, you know, that's something you could forgive. If it was a guy, it would be like, no. But it was a girl. But I knew that moment, I feel like that hurts, like, men's pride. Like, Mm -hmm. when they feel like they got their bitch took. And especially from a girl, it's like a damn. So ever since then, like, he would be cool with me, but it was never the same. So I was like, yeah, that moment I knew I fucked up. I yeah. fucked up. And I didn't even want her for real though. So I just knew I had fucked up with her. Was that the only time you ever cheated? <laughs> Damn, man. <laughs> cheated. Okay, so I was I was I was like I was a lesbian before I had my son. Okay. So with like the girls, yeah, I've cheated. Like when cheat? I was just dating strictly girls, like, yeah, I was cheating. Cause like when I just feel like like in a gay community, you be around so many girls that like girls, it just be like this is my friend, but, like, yeah, I'll kiss her and stuff. But it was just my friend, but that's how it was. So, like, technically it was cheating. Damn. It's cheating. But did you get into the relationship thinking it was going to be serious, though? That's, like, the real question. That's what you always got to ask. But you know what? Lesbians, day three, y'all living together. So it was just like, yeah. And you know you young, so, yeah, you thinking you're going to be with them. So it's yeah, just like, right. yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was in love and junk. You were in love and junk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over there every day. So it was just like, you know, lesbians r- move real fast. Damn. Because just like we both girls, we both emotional. 
we both we both thinking about shit that's not reality, but for the moment it is. Yeah, yeah, I, that that would be. I, I did think about that. I was like, if anybody, if a girl, another girl kissed my girlfriend, how would I feel about it? How would you feel? I would actually be pretty damn annoyed. Yeah, like what the I, fuck I is you doing? I wouldn't like it. I thought I thought, and that's what I had to learn to where that's the age. Yes, we're young, so we don't think it's a big of a deal. But if you, if I mess with a grown a grown ass man, it's no. What the fuck is you doing? Mm. So that's what I really been learning is like trying to be mature about like relationship stuff and like how I think because I do get in my head trying to make excuses to where it's just like, no, you on bullshit. Yeah. So I've been trying to break that. It is a good question. Everybody always has to consider, is it yourself that's unable to handle a relationship or is it that you're not with the right person? And that's something that it takes a long, long time to figure out. Um, and it might be both. It might be both, too. That's yeah. another thing. That's all, the, the thing that people always miss out about life is there's a thousand different ways that it could be working. Yeah. Like it's never just like one way or another way. It could be a thousand different ways that this relationship is working that makes it happen the way it's happening. It's like, oh, if you don't do this, that means you don't really love that person. It's like, no, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I and I feel like things take time. And it's just like people are going to change for who to, who they want to be with. So it's just like if it's constantly like problems, it's just not meant to be. Like that's what I've been trying to shy away from. Like God is showing you the signs. you just not taking it. Yeah. You're ignoring it. And then you want to complain when he's showing you who, you who he is. Yeah. And then when he goes off and cheats, it's like, oh, like you'll, you'll be surprised like, why by are you it. Surprised? You should not be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a gold tooth? Or is yeah, that I, a got little, I got a little uh, stone. Oh, that's cool. What's that from? Thank you. Just some bullshit. Oh, it looks fire. Thank you. Yeah. I love it. But yeah. my sister did it. It was just like a little bedazzle. I used to have it on the other side. But it's not the tooth, though. It's just the front of it? Yeah, just the front of it. I was about it. to say, that'd be crazy. I'm going to get the real one. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to like. Are you going to wear uh, grills eventually? Yeah. Of yeah. course. Yeah, it'd be crazy. I'm gonna get like the whole thing. Once you ball out with music, like once your career gets to that point, what do you think your fashion is gonna change at all? Yeah. What are you gonna start rocking? All types of shit. Like <laughs> I want to do everything. Like you know how like Cardi B, she, you never know how she. That's how I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be doing everything. I'm gonna let like everybody style me and stuff. That's crazy. Yeah, like I want to do crazy shit. Yeah. Just good, like just they they wear ridiculous shit. Though. I'm not gonna lie. When I go on their Instagrams, I'm always like, "What the fuck?" Like, yeah, how did some you of think? it be like, "Come on now." The music videos are insane, bro. Like the music videos, are you you wonder who's who's on acid while you guys are creating these videos? Because <laughs> there's no way you're making this shit just fucking normal, yeah, like, like just on the day to day. Because you see, like my ideas, it be like straightforward. With them, it's just be like you really gotta do some drugs to think of this shit. Like for real, <laughs> you gotta do some because like. It's just like how, especially Cardi B. Mm -hmm. I say that's one like one person that they don't look the same every time. Mm. Her looks are like different. Yeah. So it's just like I want to do. I I be want to do crazy shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, their music videos are fucking too bright for me. When I watch them, <laughs> I'm like, Hold like when that wet ass pussy song came out. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. I come from like an older generation where like that shit's too much, bro. Like I know Lil' Kim was talking about stuff like that, but goddamn. Everything is really like straight to the point now. Mm hmm Like especially like sexy red. Oh my god. Everything is like straight to the point. Straight to the point. If when you do look at uh female artists, is there any one that stick points you can point out that is kind of more on the inspirational side to you? I would say Lotto. Mm. Cause I like I absolutely love Lotto, and I would say more like at the R and B side, I would say like more like I'm more like of a like Victoria Monet type, mm. but I love like old school like Jasmine Sullivan. I always been like a R and B person. Like I was never like a rap girl for real. I didn't start being a rap girl until like I really got Detroit, got to Detroit. But still, I'm still not really a rap girl. Mm. It takes me too long to learn the lyrics. Yeah, the less friction is better. So whatever is working is the better way to go. Yeah, right? you just figure out how to break into the scene without getting taken advantage of. All like, you got to do since you got good people around you, because I know the people who are around you. Mm -hmm. You're never gonna get caught up in a situation that wastes your time, pretty much. Yeah, luckily because of that. And I and I love being in the studio with them because I just really be amazed how rappers work. 
Mm. R&B workers, R&B singers don't work like that. Like they could go in there, make a song that day, drop, record the video, and drop the video the next day. So like being around them, I really be like, that's how I want to work. So like I would want to go in there, get a song done. Like I had like probably like a two weeks, and I put up like and I came up with a whole album because oh. we was just trying to see like how fast can we work. Mm. Like let's try to get an album done in two weeks. Yeah. Or less. Because being around them, it's nonstop. It's nonstop. That's the game these days. It's cost efficiency, right? So they're figuring out how to do everything with the least amount of money and mm-hmm. the fastest amount of time so that there's a bigger return. And it's so easy now. Yeah. Especially so like with Instagram and stuff like that. And they have the mentality of, I want to work harder than everybody else. Mm-hmm. So that's that's really the mentality I've been trying to have is like, I want to work harder than everybody else. I don't want, you don't got to give me no handouts. Or I want to work hard as everybody else. Yeah. To where, like, you can't deny me. You feel me? Exactly. There was somebody who was talking about that on t- TikTok. I forget. He's a very famous guitarist. I forget his name. Billy Joel. Mm-hmm. And so he was talking about, somebody asked him, how did you become so successful? And his response was literally, he's like, bro, all I did was show up, do what I was supposed to do. And nobody else was consistently showing up to do what they were supposed to do. Yeah. So he was like, my competence took me to the next level, next level, next level, next level. He's like, I seen people way more talented than me around me, but they weren't yeah, working hard enough. Working, yeah. And then he's like, I was just like going up and up and up because he's like, I'm not the best guitarist in the world, bro. He's like, I'm yeah. not the best singer or guitarist. He's like, I just the one who worked the hardest to get to this fucking point. Exactly. That's and that's all- really all is all it's about. Yeah. Like, my team, I have an amazing team, but it's just still at the end of the day, it's up to me. Facts. The team can't work without me. So it's just like, if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, how is that going to give them the motivation to, to do what they're supposed to do for me? So it's just like, it all starts with the artist. Yeah. Nobody is going to be as motivated as you if you don't make that environment to be like, okay, yeah, we about to go do this. Oh, then I think you should do this. So it's just like, if you're not working, people not going not gonna to work. Facts. Um, Is there any projects or anything you want to announce to everybody? Um... So really, though, I'm working this single right now, but I will be performing at the Riverfront Festival. Sick. With, you know, Queen Naja, Monica, and all that. So I'm really excited for that. That's what I have coming up. And, of course, the EP that I'm planning to do with um, the rappers like Skilla Baby, Baby Money. Is anybody else going to be on the tape? Um, I was kind of trying to do, like, PZ. Like, you know, everybody. Yeah. But I haven't really narrowed down, like, you know, who is, like, really going to be. What do you think about Doughboy Clay's voice? I love him. Doughboy Clay's amazing, right? Yeah. They put and him to, next to Anita Baker. He, <laughs> yeah, we supposed to actually be doing a song together. We just haven't gotten the lab yet. But it's we, we plan to do a song together. It's going to be very interesting to hear that. Yeah, and I'm excited. Like, I love working with new people. And I'm excited to see, like, what we come up with. Mm. Uh, do you want to give a sample to everybody real quick, or is your voice not uh, Oh, yeah. I'm oh. <laughs> always ready. Let's do it. What you want me to sing? You can sing the new song that just, that just dropped. That just dropped? Yeah. Okay. I saw you out the other night. I didn't even feel nothing. Until I saw your new bitch, I was confused. And usually I would throw a fit, but why would I make a scene? Why would I let you see me that way? Love comes with casualties. It's just a game that you play. Don't believe a word that you say, because I heard it all. Woo! <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. Incredible. I wasn't not expecting that. Thank you. The whole room's energy just shifted with that one. Thank you. Uh, not to piss everybody off before we sign off, tell everybody why you would prefer to date older men before we sign off. Oh, um, <laughs> I prefer to date older men because... i actually don't know why i just attract older men like it's just me talking to somebody my age i just i don't want nobody to think like me i want to learn from somebody Uh, so i think that's why i like dating older men because like the i can actually learn something from them and it's just like if you're my age we still figuring this shit out unless they got their shit together I don't mind. I just happen to have it. I happen to come across somebody my age. That has it together? Not even have it together that I'll be interested in. I'm just like, no, you don't even look grown enough for me. Oh, damn. Like, I like somebody to look grown. I feel it. 
I feel it. All right, that's going to piss a lot of people off, so I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, appreciate you being a part of this. We look forward to the ta- uh, tapes dropping thank and you, then the show you. coming up soon. So um, thanks for being a part of this. Hopefully, I want to see that Doughboy Clay, um, that song. Uh, that's how I'm going to look forward to the most. Period. I'm, I'm Comes a session. I'm, re- I'm pulling up. I promise it. Pull it We're up. at Parallel Sound Studio, High Low Visual Shooting These Productions. We're out. Peace. Bye.